Wednesday's market closes were mixed in both grain and livestock futures trade. Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing is here with analysis. And Brian, of course, wheat, the big star of the day. We ended off session highs, but the big push initially coming from maybe tech that Putin's going to step away here from the export deal. But was it just a one day rally, do you think? Right. So, so it looks like it probably is a one day rally because it's on words. It's, there's nothing, nothing fundamental with it. There's no concrete evidence that things are going to happen, but there's a lot of rhetoric and the war continues to drag on and push on. So globally, when you look at the wheat market, Michelle, it's really hard to be negative price when you look at wheat availability of exportable countries and then the Northern hemisphere woes with drought conditions and particularly look at China. But these macroeconomic conditions continue to surface, and that is more lockdowns in China, worries about imports from China, what they're going to spend. Uh, The wheat market's getting a boost from the the Putin talk. But beyond that, it's really challenging to find fundamental factors that are supportive. That'll take they'll take time. That is weather, maybe a La Nina pattern, things like that. But for right now, it looks like it's probably more of a one day event. Um, it's a short-term guess, but it looks like it just the way it finished. It didn't finish on a real firm note. No, finished off its highs, and of course, uh, part of that may have been you know corn pulling back, and they kind of pulled off highs together. So, corn market, what happened there? Did we run up into some chart resistance and just see some profit taking? You did. You know, right up around that uh, 688 level, six, uh, you know, portion 690 in December corn. You, you'll run into some profit taking, some hedge pressure, some Bollinger Band resistance lines. But more importantly, you had a macroeconomic condition, and that is crude oil really took a hit again, now trading at its lowest level since mid uh, March. And that's just right after the war. So all of the crude oil premium has been lost, let's call it from the war. Tough to get corn prices to move higher as you're looking at basis levels, you'll probably see those start to weaken a little bit due to the um, likelihood that that the dollars that the ethanol plants have to work with are really starting to come under pressure uh, because of crude oil. All of a sudden you got crude oil approaching the low 80s. It's no longer the mid 90s or 105 or even 120. So I think that's your bigger story is the dump out in the energy complex, at least for now. And ultimately, farmers selling, though, I think, likely slow. So we're not really looking for corn prices to drop off much or probably rally a lot. Look for more range bound until we get a little more information from the USDA next week or from harvest. Yeah. So crude oil closing below the $85 mark. Do you see a lot more downside potential in that crude oil market? Probably not. Um, it's, It's a demand concern, demand worries, demand out of China, demand in the U.S., those are concerns that when prices were higher, high prices secure high prices. Now that's dropped back. We would expect Saudi Arabia will likely shut down any extra inventories or supplies. Um, prices at the gas pump start to become a little more achievable for consumers. We don't think there's a lot of downside. If there is, it's probably a buy opportunity. The world is full of strife right now, and um, it's unlikely that energy prices are all of a sudden are going to catapult into a bear market. They're correcting hard. Not unusual toward the end of summer when the driving season winds down, the market will take another look at it, but we wouldn't be surprised if it's probing for a low. So that lower crude oil market weighed on soybean oil and in addition, um, these COVID concerns that you talk about in China, but a pretty poor technical day in soybeans. So do do you see a lot more downside risk in that market or where do we find next support? Yeah, the two most recent rain events that did push through the Midwest likely maintained or added bushels in those areas that that needed it. Uh, The Western Corn Belt, though, I think that's a drawdown. Get into the Dakotas, the Nebraska, these other areas, yield numbers here in August and September, I think, on the decline. So I think the net change is probably zero, which, if accurate and in line with last month's USDA and Pro Farmer and DTN, you're talking 51, 52 bushels an acre. That's not enough to sustain a rally at this point especially when we don't have demand numbers. So we don't we don't see those export sales numbers. We don't know China's buying, but uh, worldwide, when you saw Argentina uh, make adjustments to their peso uh, pegging, we think we saw China come in and start to scoop up inventory out of Argentina. So worldwide, China's still buying. It's just in a different form. We've got harvest just around the corner. It looks like that yield number around 51 and a half, 52, will likely keep beans from rallying toward 15 as long as combines begin to show that as well. Okay, so do you think there's more downside though because of the poor close that we had? 
I always worry there's more downside in the commodity market because it doesn't take anything to push prices lower. And if the trade gets worried about margin call, those type of things you could see. But I think the downside there, again, is limited. Okay. World supplies across the board are tight. We can talk about perceived big crops out of Brazil. That's six, eight months away. Uh, weather uh, analysis is starting to point toward more of a prolonged La Nina pattern. I heard this that. This could be very problematic. So we wouldn't be shocked. And I'm going to talk a little bold here. But the entire bean crop is worth roughly 60 65 billion dollars china has 1.2 billion people so if the country of china really wants to secure inventory and their drought concerns are an impact don't be surprised on pullbacks if they come in and make very significant and large purchases just to have kind of the burden head mentality in the soybean complex cattle market we didn't see the follow through there after a couple of really strong technical days again did we just run into chart resistance or see some profit taking or was there more than that i think it was just that i think it was profit taking chart resistance we're still concerned about the overall inflationary impact and whether consumers are going to chase chase prices higher but boy if you take the inflationary uh, concern out of the marketplace really good demand tightening inventory We've talked about this for months and years about the drought out west, cattle herd reducing. So we stay with an optimistic view, but the cattle can't do it on their own. We need kind of the commodity complex to move, and we need to see the money flow continue to move in. I think the trade is looking more at a trader's market. That is, sell the rallies, buy the dips. There's probably more money to maybe, maybe be had there and they try and stick with the long-term trend. So when things start to weaken, we saw the crude oil drop. As soon as that crude oil really came under pressure, everything else just kind of unwound today. And I'll keep pointing back to that. That's such an important, uh, perceptive, if nothing else, view of commodities. When, when, when the energies aren't moving higher, it's tough to get the others to move higher uh, consistently. Yeah, a lot of days it's about money flow. All right, thanks so much for joining us. Brian Doherty with Total Farm Marketing.